Hi guys, I'm here today to talk to you about my favourite book or books of all time. Penguin Platform is sponsoring this video. They got in touch with me and asked me if I would like to talk about my favourite books because they know that my favourite books are His Dark Materials by Philip Pullman and do we all know what's coming out on the 19th of October? It's the Book of Dust and I'm so excited. <laughs> so His Dark Materials, the first in the series, is called Northern Lights in the UK and this was the copy that I first had. I was gifted it for Christmas when I was about 10 I think, but I didn't actually read it until I was about 14 and I remember it vividly because I was on holiday in Portugal and I only had the first one with me and I finished reading and it ends on a cliffhanger, I'm getting cross just thinking about it, and I didn't have the sequel The Subtle Knife with me and all I wanted to do was get back home to rainy England. Since the age of 18 and I'm 30 now I've reread it if not every year then every other year and I actually studied it independently for my dissertation. I wrote about that and compared it with Peter Pan and Narnia um, and I've made another video on Peter Pan which I'll link down below. I'm not going to include major spoilers for the series in this video but I am going to talk about various things so if you want to know nothing about the books before going into it then stop watching, go read them, come back, they are well worth your time. But in here I'm going to be talking about why I love His Dark Materials generally um, and then I'm also going to be talking about what my hopes and dreams are for the Book of Dust and I would love to know your hopes and dreams in the comments section. Philip Pullman wrote his dark materials for many different reasons. He's inspired by William Blake and John Milton. Another reason that he wrote this series was as an answer to Narnia. Now I really enjoyed The Magician's Nephew and The Lion, The Witch and the Wardrobe but I wasn't a huge fan of the rest of the series, particularly of the ending and I know that Narnia fans can feel quite precious about the series, I understand because I feel quite precious about this one, but in summary Philip Pullman wanted to give another chance, another story for Susan. Susan is locked out of heaven which is Narnia by Aslan who is Jesus. Pullman says that Narnia is full of religious propaganda and you can say exactly the same thing about his dark materials except in a completely different way and I think that Philip Pullman would nod and thank you for that. <laughs> Lyra, the main character in his dark materials, gets to be the Susan that we never had and she's so much more than that too. Whereas Narnia is an adventure story where there is a reenactment of the fall, so Adam and Eve being tempted and thrown out of the Garden of Eden, shown as evil by the character of Jardis, His Dark Materials is an adventure series where there is a reenactment of the fall but it's shown as a celebration of humanity and all of its flaws. And there are talking polar bears too. At its core, His Dark Materials is an adventure series like nothing I have ever read before or since. I'm still looking for a series of books that compares to it. I've read Arcadia by Ian Pierce, which is a bit of a homage to His Dark Materials, but really out there I haven't found much that lives up to the standards of His Dark Materials and if you have any recommendations please let me know. Our main character is Lyra, a liar who is used to creating her own stories because she isn't familiar with her own narrative. She was left at Oxford University to grow up eavesdropping in cupboards, hello Narnia reference, and stealing from the kitchens. She doesn't know her history, so she's like a magpie. She steals pieces of other people's stories and sticks them to herself and lies through her teeth. She is creating her own truth. Lyra is fake news. <laughs> However, she is then catapulted into a story, a big one. She is given a truth reader called an alethiometer, is able to delve into multiverses where multi-narratives do exist, and she is confronted with the importance of truth. Lyra's best friend Roger is stolen away by the gobblers. They are child snatchers who are headed up by this woman who has golden hair and a golden monkey who tempts children using hot chocolate, or as it's called in this series, chocolatel, because like Milton, Pullman likes to make up words and also she is another representation of Jaris from Narnia who tempted Edmund using Turkish delight. Lyra is determined to save Roger so she travels north where there are witches, armoured bears and peril. I've not even mentioned the best thing about this universe yet and you guys know what I'm going to say. So I mentioned that it's set at Oxford University but this isn't our Oxford University as we know it here on Earth in our universe. It's a parallel universe where it's a slightly different version of Oxford and in this world everyone has a demon. Demons are representations of your soul that live on the outside of your body in the form of animals. Yes, it is that amazing. Until you're an adult, these change shape. Lyra's demon is called Pantalaemon and he morphs from cat to moth to bird depending on how she's feeling. When children become adults, their demons become fixed and whatever form they take is supposed to be a representation of their personality. Everybody who reads this series wants to have a demon 
myself included, thank you very much. Sexuality and spirituality are also inherently tied up here because demons also represent spirituality. The church would like to stop children's demons fixing because they would like to keep them in this state of innocence. There are scientists and other people out there who think that they shouldn't do this. So mix that with the slightly modern day setting and you get an actual real life fight between science and religion. On her journey across the three books, Elira meets Will, who's from our world, and she gets to travel to lots of other worlds besides. She mingles with witches who live forever but who mate with human men, and she gets to travel to the world of the dead, which is the most heartbreaking scene in the entire book, and I'm not going to talk about it because if I do, I'll just cry. We encounter many different travellers, such as Mary Malone, a scientist in our world who's trying to study consciousness, and we encounter many different devices to open portals into other places, which cause absolute chaos. This book is filled with the most magical storytelling and world building and characters that are so complex that I swear they just walk off the page. They are that intricate. Every time I reread this book I marvel at all the little things that I didn't notice before and I've read this book so many times. Also, I still don't know how I feel about Mrs Coulter. That woman is a maze. For many, many years now Philip Pullman has been promising us the book of dust. It's like this thing, this abstract thing in my brain. I can't believe that it's actually coming out. We've been waiting patiently for a very long time. It's a series of books, a trilogy, um, and the first book in the series is out on the 19th of October, and it's set 10 years before his start materials. The following two books are set 10 years after. So because of that, Philip Pullman isn't calling them prequels or sequels, he's calling them equals, which I like very much. And the front cover of the first book looks like this. I am always slightly cautious going into books like this that are a new series following a series that I loved where there's been a gap or um, retellings of a book I have particular nostalgic feelings about because we've all been burned before but I trust Philip. I trust him a lot. He knows his world or worlds and he knows his characters. I'm treating this trilogy as a parallel universe to the ones he's already given us a companion as a compendium. I am thinking of this new trilogy as the demon of the original books. Yes, I am. I'm excited. So what are my hopes for it? I would love to know more about the relationship between Lee Scoresby and Yorick Bernson. Now we got a little look at this in a companion, a small companion book called Once Upon a Time in the North, but I'm greedy and I would like some more. I'm excited to know more about the childhood of Mrs Coulter, so I hope we find out more about that. As I said, she is such a complex character, so I'd love to know more about the way she thinks and what's happened to her to make her the character that we were presented with originally, because I think that would be really, really fascinating. There are lots of really cool inventions in Northern Lights, in fact, in all three books, um, and I would like to know more about that. It's quite steampunky, this series of books, actually. I want to know more about the inventions and the people who invented them, and maybe some history of the alethiometer. I would enjoy that. I also want to know more about the relationship between humans and their demons, and the representation of demons' sexuality, especially from the point of view of LGBTQ plus characters, because Pullman kind of touched on this very slightly in the original trilogy. There are some characters who had demons who had the same gender as them, which was contrary to most people that we met in this series. And it was an indication that these were queer characters. So I wanna know more about that. Um, that kind of does create a binary, but I think only because it was mentioned in passing. I'm sure that if the reader was presented with more information on this subject, it would be more nuanced. We did see some queer characters in this book, the witches. I don't think that's really canon, but I do think the witches have the potential to be queer characters. And also, Burke and Balthamus, who were two lost angels, who were two of my favourite characters in this series, and I would love to know more about them, though I think it might break my heart. To be honest though, as much as I love all the characters who we were introduced to, whether or not I actually love, love them, or just love to hate them, I am not crossing my fingers to only see familiar faces in these new books because I trust Philip to create characters that I'm gonna want to read about. So I think what I'm hoping for over characters is the world building. I wanna know more about the different worlds that he introduced us to and worlds outside of those worlds as well. I'm particularly interested in the mythology of these worlds because storytelling is so important to the original trilogy. So these worlds must have their own origin myths and things like that. I would love to know more stuff like that because that's the kind of stuff that I geek out over. 
So there isn't long for us to wait. As I said, the book is out on the 19th of October. You can pre-order it at your local bookshop. And I'll also leave some links down below if you would like to pre-order. I'm also gonna leave links down below to videos where I've discussed his dark materials before in more detail because it's something that I love to do. I'm gonna be doing another video about his dark materials over on the Penguin platform channel in a couple of weeks. So if you wanna be notified of that, you can subscribe to their channel, which I'll also link in the description box down below. I have some questions for you. Do you love his dark materials? If you haven't read it, please do go Go pick them up. What are your hopes and dreams for the Book of Dust? Let me know in the comment section down below. And final question, if you had a demon, what would your demon be like and why? Let me know in the comment section down below. I hope you guys are having a great week and I'll speak to you very soon. Lots of bookish love. Bye.